Good morning, class. We're going to work with our dot cards today, and these are the dot cards of the 12 family. We're going to do addition and subtraction. Let's, let's read this addition sentence. How many dots are on this side? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, plus one equals 12. The twin, one plus 11 equals 12. Let's count, oh, let's go back and do subtraction. We're gonna start with all of them, which is 12 minus 11 equals one. And then let's say it this way. 12 minus one equals 11. Next, let's count the dots on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plus two equals twelve. Two plus ten equals twelve. Subtraction, twelve minus two equals ten. Twelve minus ten equals two. Count this side. Let's count by twos. Actually, let's count by threes. Three, six, nine, plus three more is 12. Three plus nine is 12. 12 minus three equals nine. 12 minus nine equals three. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, plus four equals 12. Four plus eight equals 12. Yes, and then this, and then the subtraction. 12 minus four equals eight. 12 minus eight equals four. All right, let's keep going. Count this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus five equals 12. Five plus seven equals 12. 12 minus five equals seven. 12 minus seven equals five. Now this is a double, so there's no twin because either way, it's the same. Okay, so let's say the double. 6 plus 6 equals 12. 12 minus 6 equals 6, and there's no related. All right, we're back at the beginning there. I wrote some combinations on the board, and I want to take a look at them. One does not belong. Let's see if we can figure out how they are grouped together and which one does not belong. Read them with me. 9 minus 3 equals 6. 9 minus 6 equals 3. 6 plus 2 equals 8. 3 plus 6 equals 9. Do you know which one doesn't belong? Well, 9 minus 3 equals 6. And then 9 minus 6 equals 3. These are related. 6 plus 2 equals 8. Okay. And then 3 plus 6 equals 9. Well, three, six, nine, three, six, nine, three, six, nine. These are all, these are from the same family, either addition or subtraction version. But six plus two equals eight. No, there's nothing there that makes him be a part of this other family. So this one does not belong. Nine minus three equals six, and six minus three, 6, 9 minus 6 equals 3 are related, and 3 plus 6 equals 9 is, um, these are all in the 9 family here, 9 subtraction and 9 addition. So that is um, just another way of practicing your addition and subtraction facts is by um, seeing how well you can read dot cards. It's in, it is uh, making your mind think through addition and subtraction problems. Yesterday, we talked about story problems, and I gave you some story problems with too much information. 
Today we're going to review a couple of those. We're going to ask you some new ones. See if you can figure out what information is not needed to come up with our answer. Five robins were sitting in a tree. Four more robins and three blue jays came to join them. How many robins were in the tree? Well, they said four, five robins were in the tree. And then, excuse me, yes, five robins were in the tree and then four more robins came and three blue jays came. But we don't need to know how many blue jays came. They only wanted to know how many robins there were. So three blue jays was not needed. Our sentence would be five plus four equals nine. Nine um, uh, robins, nine robins. Here's another one. Mom baked four loaves of bread and five pies. She bought two cakes. How many things did mom bake? She baked four loaves of bread and five pies. She bought two cakes. Well, we want to know how many things she baked. So the things she bought, eh, we don't need to know. So she bought four loaves of bread plus five pies. So she baked nine things. One more. How you doing? Are you getting it before I tell you the answer? The school was having a reading contest. One night, Tanya read four pages. Tina read three, and Alex read five. How many pages did Tina and Alex read? So Tanya read four, Tina read three, and Alex read five. But the question is, how many did Tina and Alex read? So whose do we not need to know the page numbers for? Tanya. We just need to know that Tina's three plus Alex's five, they read eight pages all together. So some of you have told me that your surprise from last week arrived. If you didn't get it yet, I mailed them all on the same day, but you live at different um, places, so it takes a little longer for some of them to get to you. So don't worry, keep checking that mail because I know you all did a good job on your work last week. Remember, I've got another item to send you. If you tell me um, my work is done, send me the fun. If you do have those erasers that I sent you, I want you to find them and I want you to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and put them in front of you. We're gonna work on fractions. If you do not have these, could you just draw eight circles? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would work too. We're gonna work with fractions. I wanna take these eight um, erasers or your eight circles and divide them in half. So, I know that I'm going to have two groups because my bottom number tells me how many groups. They need to be an even number. So I could have four on top and I could have four on this side. One group of four, two groups of four. If you are doing it with a pencil, then you could just draw a line between your top row in your bottom row, that would be dividing them in half. Now I want you to put your group back together. If you um, are having circles, that's fine. You can just leave that the way it is. But I'm gonna scoot my erasers back over because this kind of shows a group anyways with them divided on a top row and bottom row. I still have eight, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But now I want to divide them in fourths. So here I have eight. I've already divided them in half once and we, um, to make two groups, but now we need four groups. So to make fourths, we divide in half, then we divide each half in half. So this half goes two and two, and this half goes two and two. Now I have one, two, three, four. Four groups with two in each group. If you are doing your pencil, 
We've already divided in half, so then I divide this half in half, and I divide this half in half. Now I have four groups. One, two, three, four. All right, now we're gonna work with a different number. Now I wanna work with six. So I want you to take two of them away and get a row of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. If you're using dots, then let's just make six dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're done with this one. So I want to make the fraction one third. I want to make the fraction one third. So how many groups will I need? Three. You cannot divide, you cannot divide um, six, you cannot divide into thirds by just cutting down the middle. So the easiest way to divide into thirds is to designate three group leaders. So here's one group, here's another group, and here's another group because I want three groups when I'm done. Then I just start um, handing out the rest of the players. Here's one for you, here's one for you, and here's one for you. I now have three groups with two in each group. Now when you're doing it on paper and you can't really move your circles around, you kind of have to just use your eyes. Well, I can, I can pretend that my top row are my group leaders because that would represent three groups. So then I would say, okay, you can have this one, you can have this one, and you can have this one. So this would be group one, group two, group three. So I divided six into thirds and each group has two. How'd you do? that make sense? Oh, I have a really fun example for you. Have a candy bar. It's real. I sure wish I could share it with you. So if you have any chocolate at your house, then when this video is over, you go to your parents and say, Mrs. Gallucci would have given us a piece of chocolate if we were in her classroom. Could we please have a small piece? Now I don't mean a huge candy bar. Mm -mm -mm. That's too much. But maybe they could just give you a little piece. Maybe they prefer you wait until later and you just say, yes, ma'am. But in my lesson today, I'm going to show you something with a candy bar. And maybe you can even do this experiment at home. I have a whole candy bar. I'm going to divide my candy bar in half. I divided it in half, so now how many groups do I have? I have two groups. If I want to make fourths out of my candy bar, how many groups am I looking for? Four. The easiest way to make fourths is to first break in half, then break each half in half. So this half in half, and then this half in half. So now let's count my groups. One, two, three, four. Four groups. And I did that by breaking it in half and then each half in half. That makes fourths. Okay, um, we have a workbook page to do. That's page 279 and 280. I'll go over the instructions with you on our next video. In page 280, there are actually some parts that you cannot complete without me. So make sure you come back. Bye-bye.